my name is Victoria, and welcome to my art studio. Now let's show you a technique on um, cleaning the water jet. Not that difficult. One thing that you do need to remember is each application of the paint should be transparent in order to see what's underneath. That is what creates the illusion is seeing through the water jet. And when you finally put that nice sparkle of highlight on it in the end, it's when it really comes to life. In the beginning, we just put in the form to create the dimension of the water jet. The piece I chose was I just found a piece in my studio, and it's right here, and it's, it's got a red and green apple on it, and you might be able to see the water jet on there. It's a light water jet, and I wanted to point that out to you because you wouldn't normally want to put large water jets, you know, that overshadows an object. But I did need to put this um, large size on there so you could see it under the camera. If it was too small, you wouldn't be able to see it. <laughs> see what I was doing. But when you put your water jets on, you remember that, so, you know, don't make them so large and overpowering you know, that it overtakes the painting. And when people look at it, it's kind of familiar for those nice water jets. The colors I use are just the values of my object. I have darker red, darker green. I have some warm white. I also have some Indian yellow. So the colors that you would use are darker values of the object where you want to put the you want to drop on. So pick out a piece and turn it on with them. The thing we're going to do is we're going to draw on your water drop. And this is when I use the top pencil or regular pencil. And this is something that you can, you can practice. You don't know, get a good stick that you like. There's any way to do things to wipe it off with water. But this is what you to do, you know, drawing on a water drop stick. So yeah, just the corner layer on my flat bed. And one thing you have to remember from the water drop is everything needs to be transparent. When you put this color on, you want to put it on very transparently um, so that you can see through it. I'm just using water in my room. And you have to think of your light source. Obviously, on this, after my light source is coming from the upper right, if so I'm, I'm going to put a cast bottle on the lower left, and I would go all the way underneath and about halfway up and around. And I need to just really make sure that it's not too heavy. I'm just going to mop this one, just softening the edges now. It's, it's a little harder to do this if you're not using extending. But just, if I, probably if I use extending now, I'm going to wipe off the water there. You know, the extending is going to wipe off the top. But if it's going to go down, I don't want to use it. Mm -hmm. So the dark area, and this is a green, so I was just a green one. So I've got this darker value green. I'm going to do it on the wrong side. Right, acrylics do dry darker, so you do have to wait for that fade to dry. I've got just a little bit of dry in there. Thing about water jets is at this stage, what you're doing is you're building the value. When it looks like a water jet is on that final stage, when you do just a little flicker of light, this is when the analysis I'm creating the shape and the form through light and dark value. And then when you put that flicker of light, the light all comes together. The next thing is I'm going to put a little bit of a Indian yellow 
I'm feeling lost. Now that's where the real Dr. Knight is sitting in the night class. The class of two objects so it's illuminating the water drop. Now, we can do an Indian yellow, so it's going to add a little bit of intensity, a little warmth in there. And then we need to show it quite a bit. After I put that on, then I'm going to come into a little bit of a warm light. I can have one more with me, so I can do that. Remember, I have to be really careful that I don't lose too much paint at this stage. Because every stage is important that you can see through each stage of the development. I'm going to do like an oval shape at the bottom. Just eliminate the middle. So I'll put some of value on me so that I can still see it, but I haven't, you know, gotten it well handy. And now I can use my extender medium. And when you do use extender medium, you're going to put the tiniest bit on. But I guess you can always turn this on as well. It shouldn't look kind of weird on, but this is going to let me do some blending. I'm going to turn this on to set this darkening on the upper right side. Now remember, you do have to build this up slowly. And also remember, it's going to dry a little bit better. I will build this up maybe two or three times before I go on to another value. And if you do want to your brush in water, make sure that you dip your brush back in some extended medium. Go back to the red again. Take my thumb. I'm going to go back to the red. I'm going to pick up a little bit of a bit of sienna. I'm going to make this a little darker. It's also going to turn it down. And so this is a little more if you extend it, so I've got a little bit more time this time to play around with it. Turn the blue. Put the blue on my brush, and I'm just going to soften out the outer edges. I, I don't want to really touch them just too long. In the shadow, it's going to be on the outside. Just going to straighten it a little bit on the inside. I'm going to touch some of this red, these red streaks in here. So if I start to use them, I'm actually going to take the shadow of my body and put them over these streaks because they're going to make it. A clear transparent is being able to see exactly what's underneath the water. And if I get rid of all the speaking, then that's going to be the same illusion. Come back with some more like, Indian water. And this is already a transparent color, so. And if you can use the transparent color, that helps part of this process. And I'm building up that lower left again. And it's the tiniest bit of white on me. And I'm doing a little bit of that a little bit. Make sure that, you know, before you apply the extender again, it definitely has to be dry. It has to be hair dry. So that because what will happen if it's not dry, you'll we'll take your little push to the extender on and then we'll just pull everything off if, if that's not thoroughly dry. 
the stuff is not as bad as that upper right again. And this time I'm going to make smaller areas. Like I think about turning the earth in a smaller size. So the first size is we put down the uh, widest in size. And then as we get, we want to see all of the values that we have in here for these ones. We need to either go down to a smaller branch. And you can just try to get it within a small area. Like a red, punch down. This time I'm going to make it a little bit darker than it's going to be. I'm going to try to keep it just right up underneath. So this one I'm going to pick up a little bit of Indian yellow. Quite a little bit of that warm white and close together. I'm going to make it warm a little bit more transparent. I wouldn't normally put this large of a water drop on this couple, but in order for you to see it, I need to tell you. It does have to be quite large. I'm going to have to draw this again to hold that. I don't know if you can see the water drop very slightly taken on some form. And what it's missing is just a little bit the value of the cast iron. A little lighter, a bit refresh and lighter in here. Then the next step would be to dry it after that. And also come back and turn it into a sparkle. I'm coming back with my warm white plus a little bit of the Indian yarn. And I'm going to do this within a small area, just like the one that was. And I'm going to do a darker punch on that. Now that's going to be just right up against underneath that drop to lift it. So I'm going to have to turn it and get the, a better close up of that angle. I'm going to smaller brush also. And Side edge of that. And we'll dry this again <laughs> and put on the sparkle. I'm going to pick up just the tiniest bit of this one light, put it into my brush, this side. And then kind of come up on the tip again so you can start twisting when you take the angle. Just come up on the tip. Then I'm going to take, I'm going to, you know, just going to follow the shape of the object. So this shape of this water drop is a bit elongated at the top here. So this is the, you know, this one, just a little elongated, following the shape. It's not right on the edge, it's off the edge just a little bit. And then you one stand here, and I can see little dots. And they don't have to be, I wouldn't want them exactly the same size. I've got two more eyeballs that can also. But one I'll make a little bigger. And the one maybe I'll make just a little longer. Just to make it look a little bit really makes them look like a water drop, as you can see. So you have to build the form. Then you come back and put these little sparkles in. And there you go. Okay. Is that for you? I think it's too close because it's so much like you want. 